Welcome to the Human Health Campus Pediatric Nuclear Medicine webinar series. This webinar is entitled Lung Perfusion Scintigraphy in Pediatric Cardiology and is presented by Pietro Zucchetta from the Department of Nuclear Medicine at the University Hospital in Padova, Italy. I am pleased to present this seminar to you on behalf of the Nuclear Medicine and Diagnostic Imaging Section of the International Atomic Energy Agency in collaboration with the European Association of Nuclear Medicine. Congenital heart defects occur in around 1% of live births. The most frequent complex malformations are often seen as pulmonary flow disturbances. These malformations can be caused due to the disease itself or due to surgical intervention in the pulmonary arteries. Even if hyperperfusion is the predominant case, lung hypoperfusion is certainly not rare in congenital heart defects. Hypoperfusion is frequently observed in the tetralogy of phthalate, the most common cyanotic congenial heart disease. It can also be a consequence of post-surgical procedures commonly performed in cases of complex malformations. Diagnosis and treatment plans are based first and foremost on accurate morphological definition of the anatomical disposition. It is usually obtained by a combination of ultrasound, magnetic resonance, and angiography. The same techniques also play a major role during follow-ups, which require in many cases, if not complex, lifelong monitoring, which is particularly significant considering the rising prevalence of congenital heart defects and the increasing survival after treatment. It is worth remembering that the definition of a pediatric patient includes the growth from neonate to infant to preschool child and on up to adolescence. Therefore, modifications to different diagnostic techniques are specific for each age group. Changes in diagnosis should be adapted to the individual characteristics of each patient. Modifications include changes in dose scaling, acquisition of protocols tailored to patients' characteristics such as weight, height, cooperation level, etc., and the need to adequately inform and reassure children and their parents. Ultrasound is an indispensable tool in the diagnosis and management of congenital heart disease. The most relevant factor is the operator, but even the most skilled pediatric cardiologist can't overcome the physical limitations of the method, dependence on the echographic window, and the impossibility of direct evaluation of lung blood flow. Even the Doppler sampling for pressure gradients is limited to the proximal part of pulmonary arteries. Angiocardiography combines morphofunctional information with therapeutic options. Some examples are Rashkin's atrial septostomy, balloon angioplasty, and arterial embolization using Gianturco's coils. Local complications may eventually lead to loss of vascular access, typically femoral, therefore forcing the use of less favorable approaches such as axillary. Lung perfusion scintigraphy is well known and widely recognized for its use in congenital heart disease. Macro aggregates of albumin are preferable to microspheres because their degradation is faster, further reducing risk in case of a right to left shunt. We will consider the different steps involved in carrying out a pulmonary perfusion scintigraphy in children affected by congenital heart defects.
The site of injection should be carefully selected, taking into account the anatomo-functional situation. Scaling the number of particles takes into account the reduced number of arterioles and capillaries in the developing lung. The labeling of macroaggregates of albumin is not particularly difficult and can withstand modifications in the volumes and or specific activity without significant consequences. When a right-to-left shunt is known or suspected, a further reduction in the number of particles increases the safety of the procedure. The same holds true for patients with pulmonary hypertension or a single lung. It must be emphasized that the administration of macroaggregates of albumin in patients with a right-to-left shunt may be considered an unapproved or case of off-label use in certain countries. Besides the practical experience, it can be useful to remember that several studies of the cerebral blood flow are performed using microspheres of albumin. Here are two examples of lung perfusion scintigraphy with significant right-to-left shunts. The first patient had a tetralogy of phallet. The second is particularly interesting because it presents a right-to-left shunt with the presence of cerebral and renal activity and a significant right ventricular hypertension that was not affected by the increase in capillary resistance in the vascular underlying bed during the injection of macroaggregates of albumin. Wheezing is a contraindication because hypoventilation in lung parenchyma can be object-reversible hypoperfusion, which is not related to the congenital heart disease. Such defects have a typical patchy distribution and disappear after bronchodilation, after the administration of bronchodilators. Beta agonists administered 20 to 40 minutes before the injection can prevent this problem. Sedation is unnecessary and is often contraindicated. Detailed clinical history is mandatory before an injection. The number of particles in sight of the venous axis depend primarily on the anatomo-functional situation. This is related to types of malformation and the type of surgical treatment. A standard gamma camera, best with open gantries and a single head, is best suited for the analysis. The pediatric patient is correctly positioned in supine with mild restraint or toys. An additional image including the brain with little zoom is necessary to calculate the right to left shunt index. Image processing is quite simple and requires left and right region of interest, or ROI, positioning for the calculation of left and right percent perfusion. A right to left shunt index requires a third ROI in the brain. A hypoperfused lung may be a potential pitfall. In this case, it is possible to underestimate the extension of the lung parenchyma with an incorrect calculation. The ROI must be drawn after checking the real lung silhouette, changing the image window when necessary. This plot demonstrates the almost complete overlapping of the percentage calculated on a single posterior projection with the percentages calculated using the geometric mean which includes the posterior and anterior projection. The anterior projection can result in more difficulties for younger babies who sometimes desaturate abruptly when lying prone. The detector positioned over the supine patient can interfere with the patient's safety. 
The equivalence between the two methods of calculation has been confirmed in a multi-center audit over the lung scan organized by the British Society of Nuclear Medicine. Reporting is quite different from adult cases. The important thing is symmetry of distribution, whatever the clinical situation is. Typically, the scan is confronted with a precedent one in order to evaluate the treatment or the evolution. The study of right-to-left shunts are currently done mostly by ultrasound, with or without contrasts. Of all shunts studied, the most common in nuclear medicine is an intrapulmonary shunt. Lung perfusion focal defects are frequently related to vascular malformations or are a consequence of surgery, as in some cases of blelag tausig shunt. The left drawing shows the classic blelag tausig shunt. The subclavian artery is connected with the pulmonary artery in order to increase the lung perfusion. The drawing on the right shows a modified blalak tausig shunt, where an artificial conduct connects the subclavian artery and the pulmonary artery. It is used in some patients as a temporary measure to increase pulmonary blood flow, most often when complete correction of the subvalvular right ventricular outflow tract stenosis has to be postponed. The manipulation of the pulmonary artery can lead to damage in some branches, with a sectorial reduction in pulmonary blood flow, which persists even after removal of the shunt. This is a typical apical hypoperfusion as a consequence of right blalak tausig shunt, which has been resolved due to the definitive repair. Global result is excellent. This is another case where the focal hypoperfusion in the lower left lung is related to an interventional procedure embolization of pulmonary arteriovenous fistulas. In this case, the right lung is compressed by a hemidiaphragm paralysis. The site of injection depends heavily on the anatomic situation. Some of the most frequent situations are described in the following slides. When anatomy is normal, no particular precautions are required. It can be important to remember that slight traces of labeled particles may appear in the systemic circulation even in normal children. This is the standard distribution in a typical case of successful correction. It can be considered as a target when treatment is needed. Here we can see a global left hypoperfusion, probably due to stenosis of the left pulmonary artery. Observe the absent apical perfusion. Normally, these patients receive good results, but the hypoperfused lung is conceived by cardiologists as a long-term problem. The dilution effect observed on the right from the systemic flow, which has no macro aggregates, is due to the reduced activity in the lung.
When a cave of pulmonary anastomosis is created, the superior vena cava drains in the right pulmonary artery and therefore macroaggregates must be injected in one of the upper limbs. If there is no pulmonary flow from the main pulmonary artery, then no other injections are necessary. However, if there is a flow from the main pulmonary artery, then a second injection in a lower limb is necessary. In this case, the total dose is split in two. This drawing represents schematically a left persistent superior vena cava. In this case, the injected particles tend to visualize the homolateral lung. Therefore, it is convenient to inject a split dose in both arms. Image A shows activity only in the left lung after injection in the left arm. Image B shows the right lung appearing only after injection in the right arm. Image C is a subtraction image, image B minus image A, and shows the distribution of the second injection only. The Fontan circulation used in complex malformation provides lung perfusion directly from superior vena cava and inferior vena cava to the pulmonary arteries. The flux from the two anastomosis is asymmetric, as from the superior vena cava it enters mostly to the right pulmonary artery, and from the inferior vena cava enters mostly to the left pulmonary artery. Two injections are required, upper limb and lower limb. In Fontan circulation, it is necessary to evaluate the contribution of SVC and IVC to pulmonary blood flow. After arm injection, image A demonstrates a preferential flow to the right lung. After leg injection, image B shows the distribution results are symmetric. And image C is the subtraction image, which demonstrates nicely the preferential flow from inferior vena cava to the left lung. In this case, the tracer dose has to be divided into three injections to evaluate the pulmonary perfusion. Injection in the left arm shows the contribution from the left persistent superior vena cava as seen in image A. Injection in the right arm depicts the contribution from the normal right superior vena cava as seen in image B. The third injection in the lower limb shows the flow from the inferior vena cava. The shunt index proposed by Greenman is quite simple. It calculated the brain to lung percentage and was validated on a large group of patients. It is particularly useful in evaluating the presence and severity of intrapulmonary shunts, which can arise for instance after Fontan correction or in severe liver disease. As already mentioned, it is sufficient enough to draw a ROI encompassing both lungs and a ROI on the brain in the same image. The activity in the brain is normally less than 1% of the pulmonary activity. This is a typical case of hepatopulmonary syndrome with an intrapulmonary right to left shunt secondary to liver disease. After liver transplant, the shunt disappears. Lung perfusion scintigraphy can be used with excellent results to monitor progress of the symmetry of pulmonary blood flow after angioplasty, as in this case. It is imperative to interpret the scan in conjunction with an echocardiography because lung perfusion scintigraphy cannot evaluate stenosis of the main pulmonary artery or balanced stenosis of the right and left branches. The interval between the interventional procedure and the scan should be at least six months to avoid false results related to vasospasm or to early restenosis.
Lung perfusion scintigraphy is a safe and robust method for evaluating symmetry and distribution of lung perfusion in children with congenital heart defects. It must be interpreted in conjunction with echocardiography to avoid errors in patients with main pulmonary artery stenosis or bilateral balance stenosis. Even when magnetic resonance or angiocardiography is necessary, it represents a valuable resource for non-invasive monitoring.